Hello everyone, it's Nicola Dorier. So I want to show you on what I was working uh, these last two weeks, which is uh, integration of altcoin inside BTC Pay. Um, so just a basic uh, explanation of, of what changed compared to uh, the last time I described the user architecture in the in the podcast that is called One Click Deployment. Uh, so uh as, as you know the btc pay depends on the postgresql and depends on a block explorer that because that is called nb explorer nb explorer itself depends on bitcoin core and uh if you want uh, so for for Lycon case uh the same nb explorer server can support both bitcoin and Litecoin at the same time on one instance so it works fine because uh, Bitcoin Core and Litecoin have the same transaction format and same protocol. So it's kind of easy to have one server for both. Uh, if you have your own icon and it's the same thing, uh, then you basically just need to follow the templates. Uh, like I d you, you just do like I did for Litecoin and then you can su add support for your own coin. One thing to know is that a BTC Pay uh, don't know anything about cryptocurrency related specifically. So like if you want to have support uh, for your icon in BTC Pay, you need to fork only NB Explorer and uh, or add support on the, uh, on the existing server. Uh, and that's it. So if you, 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 your icon has a different transaction format, you need to fork NB Explorer, you need to fork NB Bitcoin and then uh, you, 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 can, you can integrate to BTC Pay. Uh, so today I want to show you how to run uh, like a BTC Pay that support both Litecoin and Bitcoin uh, from scratch. So of course, as you may know, uh, I created a one-click deploy for Azure. Um, so there is another video that details that, but what changed basically is uh, that you have a new option here, cryptocurrency, where you can select Bitcoin or Bitcoin and, and Litecoin. And here you can select which from which um, repository you will, uh, the, the, the VM will pull the Docker file. This BTC LTC directly map to this Docker Compose file here. Uh, so in this repository by default. Uh, so that's about it. Um, so I assume in the, for this podcast that you have .NET Core SDK installed on your machine. If you are Windows or Linux, you Mac, it doesn't matter. You just need it for compiling. What is very important to know is that you might need, you, you, so you need .NET Core SDK for compiling uh, the applications. However, uh, you don't need .NET Core on uh, the deployment targets. So basically in .NET Core, you can compile an application and have a, a safe contain, contained application. So in, in a, which means that you can run the .NET Core app on an operating system or on an, an environment that doesn't have .NET Core installed. Uh, it's not what, we'll what we will do today, but just to know it's possible. Uh, so that's it. Now let's start it. Uh, so I will create a new folder. And in this folder, I will start by cloning uh, BTC Pay and NB Explorer. So git clone BTC Pay server here. And I will also clone uh, and big explorer. Okay. Uh, not phone, not phone. Ah, yeah. And big explorer. So it's the garage here. Where's the phone garage? Okay. So for compiling, you just need to go inside the Docker, uh, the, the repository and run .NET build dash uh, dash C release. Okay. Same thing for NB Explorer, uh, .NET build dash, dash C release. 
So it's compiling both. It takes a little time. Maybe if it's your first time, it will take more time than in my podcast because in my podcast, there is some stuff in cache. So it's quicker. Okay. So when it finally compiled, uh, you go inside the repository for, so for nbxplorer, you go to nbxplorer folder and for running the application, you, you, you type .net and the path to the application, which is uh, not app nbxplorer. So bin release .NET Core App and Big Explorer. And then you can pass some arguments of your choice. So like, for example, here, uh, I dash dash help. And you can see that there's lots of things that you can configure, but luckily I did lots of work. So like by default, it just work uh, without any fancy command line. Uh, one thing that is needed, as you know, is that you need Bitcoin Core and Litecoin to run. So I will do that now. Uh, Bitcoin D dash rec test. So I will run it on rec test, not on testnet. So I can show you, I can mine block and send uh, coins uh, very easily. Uh, print to console. And uh, have it here. So for same thing, I start uh, my Litecoin node break test, uh, print to console. Okay, so I have two nodes running. Now I can just run my NB Explorer. Okay, so NB Explorer basically just need to know that I'm on rec tests and what chain I support. Everything else is just like uh, my, my nodes are confi configured with default configurations. So like it will just automatically find out how to connect to it. Okay, you see that it's mining some blocks because it's on rec test. So you, 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 you can see now basically that my uh, Bitcoin node and my Litecoin node uh, just connected to uh, so my NB Explorer connected to my node. Uh, so now once you have done that, then you have to run BTC pay server. So same thing, .NET, uh, and then the pass to your application release net and BTC pay DLL. And same thing I wanted to run on rec tests and I want to support Bitcoin and Litecoin. Perfect. So now you can see that uh, my server is running uh, here listening. You can see where to go on, on it. So I can connect to my, uh, to my Bit, uh, BTC pay instance. I will create a random account, not important. Okay. And inside I will create a new store. And I will configure my store to use as uh, my HD pub key. So an HD pub key is basically the destination of your wallet. So, uh, I click here and I say for Bitcoin. So I, I have a dummy uh, one that I have somewhere that I can just copy paste here. So for Bitcoin, it's a uh, one that I'm using for my tests. And for like, uh, I can say, oops, I can say, so this is for Bitcoin and for Litecoin, uh, I can put another one. So. One thing for, for example, if you have Electrum, you can easily find your HD pub key by going into wallet information and it's here. So one thing to note uh, is that I'm not using the same derivation schemes as Electrum. So like you see it's, if I copy paste here, this and copy paste here and I checked uh, oh, actually I'm, I'm not using, uh, sorry. 
Uh, actually, this is for a Bitcoin one. So I will, I will just do it again for Bitcoin. So if I just copy paste, oh yeah. So if I just I try to copy paste what Electrum is giving me in information here, uh, you will, you will certainly have an error. The reason is that I'm not using the same format as Electrum by default. So like if your XPUB key come from Electrum, uh, you have to go he click here and put Electrum and then check your XPUB key. And you see that this is the first address that will be generated for my invoices. You, you can, you should, you need to cross check basically that you are, you have the same address in your Electrum. For example, here you see this address is the first one generated. So this is configured configure correctly. Okay. So for Litecoin, imagine that you have a uh, Electrum for Litecoin as well uh, with your own uh, uh, XPUB key, you should do the same thing. So for, uh, actually, I think I can do that. Uh, normally I have, oh yeah, I have Electrum LCC here. Uh, okay, so I will run Electrum. Oops, I need to run it in, in rec test actually. Well, running it in testnet for now, but just so I can, I can show you exactly where you can get the information. So information here, same thing, you know, on your Litecoin wallet, you have this information. So you copy paste that, select Litecoin, copy paste here, select, Electrum, you see that it generates some address. You can compare here with what Electrum is giving you and 27 and 27, it's good. It's well configured. So like now I have my store with my two wallets configured correctly. Um, then uh, what I need to do is to generate a new invoice. For example, 500. and check out. So now the nice thing is that in the checkout page, as you can see, you can switch between Litecoin and Bitcoin. Okay. So uh, let's say I want to pay part of the invoice in Litecoin, uh, in Bitcoin and part of the invoice in Litecoin. How do I do? So uh, as you can see, the, the address generated for the invoice is basically the same that is in my Bitcoin wallet here, MWD8, MWD8, okay? Same thing for Litecoin, okay? The first address is basically the first address of my wallet. The reason he, why there's other address here is because I'm on testnet for my Electrum and here I'm on Rectest. So Basically, I will uh, send money to this address. Because I'm on Rectest, I don't have to have testnet coin, which is very nice. Uh, so Litecoin CLI uh, Rectest send to address. Uh, so I will send to this one. And just so you understand, uh, I will pay uh, not the full amount of the of the invoice, just a part of it. So as you can see, it takes some time to update. Uh, if you want it to be quicker, you need to configure when you start the node. You need to whitelist uh, your uh, PTC, uh, your NBIX Pro node to your to your uh, Bitcoin Core or Litecoin Core node. So here I paid and as you can see, I need to pay a little more for setting, settling my invoice. Uh, then I want to pay the other part, for example, in Bitcoin. So I will do exactly the same, uh, except with Bitcoin. Okay, and this time I pay the rest of the invoice. So I send, bam, 
okay, invoice getting paid. So the nice thing now is that as you can see, uh, in my, my, my invoice is configured confirmed. So like, now you can see in the page of the invoice all the details that you have to know as a merchant. So for example, here I received two different payments. Uh, I know how much was paid in Bitcoin, how much was paid in Litecoin, and I know all the different events that happened uh, during the lifetime of my invoice. Uh, also, the nice thing that uh, I, I implemented is that I Imagine that you developed a piece of software with BitPay that, and you support only Bitcoin right now. Uh, it was very important to me to keep backward compatibility. So which means that if you have an old piece of code that assume that everything is in Bitcoin and that right now work with BitPay, uh, actually it will still work if you migrate to BTC Pay and support Litecoin as well. Why? is because as, as far as a legacy client is concerned, uh, it's like there is only Bitcoin available. So as far as uh, the existing code uh, is concerned, I paid all the invoice in Bitcoin. Okay, so it means all code will continue to work even if you support new currencies. Uh, so that's about it I wanted to show you. Uh, and I think that's about it. If I'm, if I'm not, yeah, I think it's about it. So, uh, the next step uh, for me will be to integrate lightning network, uh, to, 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 to BTC pay. Uh, and I hope, uh, to make it as easy as to pay for, uh, in like, in Litecoin or, or Bitcoin. So I'm waiting for your feedback and check it out. It's, as, as you can see, it's very easy to set up uh, and play with it. Uh, report bugs. Uh, as, as some of you know, there is a the WooCommerce plugin that is already uh, working fine for BTC Pay. And that's basically what CoinCard uh, is right now using. Okay, so see you next for the next podcast hopefully on lightning network